finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict. And I want to go over something I'm working on today. It's going to be hopefully a, a quick, short, easy fix update to the red car. Love this car. Got a chance to drive it yesterday. Um, weather's starting to change a little bit in Florida, and I love it. Uh, yesterday morning, didn't have any issue. The last time I drove it, I went to, you know, I turned the key, and I'm like, surely the battery can't be dead. So I had charged the battery some. And when I drove it yesterday, it was fine. When I got home from Rides by the River, I was going to go meet up with my old neighbor, hang out, get some lunch, and went to start the car, and it didn't want to start. So I popped the hood, and here's what I found. I had recently replaced the solenoid, and this was a, a one that I had on the shelf from a previous project. And that day, I really didn't want to go up and get a cheap one from the auto parts store. So I tried this and it worked fine. So the only thing I've really done from a standpoint of battery, starter, solenoid, all that, this is the only thing I've changed. And again, I went with an older one that I knew that worked. When I was having the issue yesterday where the car didn't want to start, I popped the hood after trying to start it a couple times and I could see this thing was super hot, okay? So it's like, how can you tell that? Well, I just took off, and this is what made me think to do the video, because usually I just get going and I just do the work and don't video it. When I had looked at this yesterday, I could see, number one, this thing was piping hot, and you could see there where it's starting to separate where um, more than likely someone maybe cut this and they put the eyelet on it, and they did some short, some sort of like heat shrink on it. Well, anytime, in my opinion, you start to see, you know, obviously you could come back if this wasn't too bad, you could put some electrical tape on it, but I just started looking at this going, you know, this is such a nice car, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just going to take this off here. So on the non-battery side, so this is the battery side, the non-battery side, I'm gonna take off this power cable that runs down to the starter and it does loop through a piece down there to kind of keep it away from everything and then it's hard to see here but you can see right where it's routed right there and it snakes around the exhaust is down there too so i don't know if i'm going to get um if i'm going to do anything to it down there i mean where it's at you can see it's not touching the exhaust but i can tell you these engine bays get super hot and um there's just at this point, it's just easier for me to replace this. So again, I just took, um, usually I'll say disconnect the battery. I took this side off, which only took me just a couple of minutes with a half inch wrench. Um, actually, not even a minute to take this off. I've jacked the car up. I have uh, a jack stand underneath it, which I always uh, use for safety. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down there, I'm gonna take that off on the starter, measure it, go up and get, I don't know if it's 24, maybe 24 inches, it can't be that long because I can see, you probably can't in this video, but I can see down in there right where it's hooked on and it's not that long of a cable. So um, hopefully um, I can get one that's about the same size, that way I don't have to go and put an eyelet. I do have some of these nicer higher end ones, nicer ones I have in a box, I bought a whole bunch of them uh, back in the day. So if I have to cut it, I can and I can shrink. But again, it's no slight against whoever did this. I do know from the paperwork, there was a little bit of, of work done over the years. At one point, someone had put um, a circuit breaker on it, which currently that's not being used. Um, I have one on my other car. So I thought about using this for something else in terms of the stereo. But I could just tell you again, um, after I tighten, so, so going back to this yesterday, Yesterday, I put the, um, I like to use these closed-ended, uh, I'll show you here, these little guys here. I don't have a lot of tools, specialty tools, but this is one that I like, these little closed-ended deals. And um, when I put this on there, which I use the half-inch end, um, it was tight, but I could get a couple more turns. 
So it would the, the the moral of this story is what I tell you is make sure that you're tight on both of these ends, right? Um, like I said, it was tight, but when I got a couple more small turns on it, I went in the car and it fired right up. And anybody will tell you, I know Blair has preached this to me, you have to have good connections here, tight connections. If not, you're going to start causing um, some issues like what, what's happened here over the course of time. And again, I've changed this. So I know that I had it pretty tight and it's probably good routine wise. You know, I wouldn't really see these backing off, especially if you go to washer like I did on this. But I'd say every so often, just put a half inch wrench on it and at least make sure it's super tight. You know what I mean? Um, you'll avoid the issue that I had yesterday. And you can just see when you don't have a good connection, it, it starts to want to smoke a little bit. And um, it, it's just not good. So again, you don't want to cause a fire. You don't want to cause an issue. You don't want to burn out your solenoid. You just want good, clean, tight connections. And by having that, you'll avoid stuff like this and um, whatever else. So I'm going to get to it now. All right, so... My lift has something on it, so I can't use it, but I'm gonna do this really quick and show you guys. You come underneath here. I just took off that nut, and I'm gonna tell you that nut was not as tight as it needed to be. I literally got one turn on that little close-ended deal I've used, and I, I was able to take the rest off of it with my finger. So it's good just to kind of get in here and check this kind of stuff. and. Uh, it's normal stuff, you know, it can back off a little bit. I'll make sure I put a washer on it. But um, I literally took that off and you can kind of see, I'm gonna pull this out in a second. That cable, even though it has some heat shrink on the end, it's just time, it's gonna be replaced. So again, that's the starter right there. Those are a little bit of a pain to change. Um, you can get those things out. I'll do another video in the future. You can do a gear reduction starter if you ever have to which are uh, pretty awesome, also known as high torque starters. But that guy there, again, I have less than probably a minute taking that nut off up there, coming under the car with the jack stand, of course, I'm laying on my little rolly deal and uh, boom, took that nut off, both half inch. I'll go up there, pull that cable out, which again, there's one little thing, a uh, little holder that it uh, feeds through to kind of keep it away from the exhaust. We'll take a look at it, we'll measure it, and we'll go to the parts store. Hopefully get another one right now. All right, so I can't do it with one hand, but I just stretched that power cable out with the measure tape, and it's 29 inches from tip to tip. You can see there, um, there were two wire ties I clipped off. Um, those were kind of just to kind of secure it to the main harness in there. It does go through one of the factory loops, um, little holders, if you will, so that I'll be easy to snake it back through as long as I run an eyelet or have an eyelet about that size. Um, these are the eyelets I have that I purchased in the past. If I have to, um, if the auto parts store doesn't have anything close to 30 inches, um, then what I'm assuming is, let's say they have 24 and 36, I'm gonna need something, pro I could probably go a little shorter than 29, but worst case scenario, I could cut one end off and use the vise, or I have another tool to basically use kind of a hammer and you put these guys in there when it's on the wire and you hammer the thing. And what it does is it has a piece that pushes down on this and it crimps it or whatever you want to call it right there. So I have a couple of choices. Um, I do want to get a nice cable. If I can, I'm really assuming they're not going to have anything 30 inches and, uh, I could probably go again a little shorter. I just don't know if it's 29. If I could go to 24, it would maybe be worth a shot because there is a little slack in this thing, but we'll have to see. I'll let you guys know. And again, this isn't any slight against any what anybody else has done. Um, it just kind of goes to show you what I found when I bought my 67 and 09. Dude, it had an original cable and that thing was so corroded. And you just kind of get to the point and say, man, for the five or $10 it's gonna cost to repair this, uh, or in this case, replace, you'll just end up maybe even with a little bit higher gauge wire, we'll have to see. Um, you won't have to deal with what's here. And it's kind of hard to tell if that was cut originally. It looks like it was cut. I I'm assuming it wasn't lengthened. 
but it looks like it was it was cut there and then you see there is still the sheeting on it there so i don't know if if someone cut it short and then they put the sheeting back on it and then they tried to run um extra heat shrink to kind of cover that but again at this point we can tell you know it's this was the end up by the starter solenoid it's just time to replace and no big deal we'll hopefully be on our way pretty soon all right gotta run to the parts store we'll see all right so i'm in the car it's a few minutes later if i would have known the length and i looked in the lincoln forum and i didn't really see a definitive answer but i'll post it on my build thread in there um the two build threads i have in the lincoln forum also known as tfl the lincoln forum um it's 29 inches as i showed you earlier and i went on usual the usual place and i went on the usual place i go to is advanced auto parts and advanced advanced auto parts they didn't have and i hate this about some of the online stores it's not super clear on the length and most of them when i typed in like starter cable um it kind of led you down the line of they're not you know they don't have them in stock right of course it's trying to show me a specific so i hit general to try to go hey give me everything you know um, you know just a, a regular package is what i need if there's one that's 29 30 inches so got frustrated with the site just not getting the answer i need so of course i go well let's go to napa i don't go to napa all the time there's one right up where i was going to be going anyways so i checked napa um at first i did just a general search and of course it was showing me everything and i'm like okay let me just try to put the car make and model in so i log into my napa account boom 1964 65 lincoln continental boom battery cable red 29 inches and it's 12.99 like boom that's what i need so um when i was at on advanced site i started to think you know what they they were talking about 25 30 dollars for a for a cable uh and it looked like it was you know they're trying to sell you like a specialty one or something i'm like look i just need a, a nice cable i started to go you know what i know i have wire out there i have good copper wire I could easily just make one, and that's what I was basically going to do if Napa uh, didn't return uh, with, a, with a decent um, item. But what I like about the one at Napa is the ends are already crimped on. It's the exact length I need, and it just makes it easy. Um, I think those crimps, however they do it in the manufacturing process, it's just a tighter crimp, and... You know, I've seen what I've done with the little tool that I have where you can put the, the wire um, in and you can tap on it with a hammer. You know, the result is pretty good and I normally will put uh, heat shrink around it. But I thought to myself, you know, again, for $13, I'll get one that's the exact length and it already has the nice crimped ends on both ends. They're also um, slim enough that they'll be able to slide right through the one end when I fish it down. I can go right through that existing factory loop and then I'll put a couple of wire ties where they kind of had them. That way it'll just keep it tight up towards the top uh, and you'll never even really notice it because, um, you know, it's it's going to be, you know, wire zip tied, if you will, to the uh, existing harness. So you'll see the red. I might, if I have tech flex, I don't know that I have some, I might put some tech flex on it down to that point, but, you know, to the point of where you don't really see it. But again, that would be kind of going a little over the top. And I have to see if I have any Tech Flex left. That stuff is awesome. I love it. I ran it all in the engine bay on my 64 to replace kind of that old, um, I don't know if it's called sheathing or whatever it is, but that old uh, stuff that's around the existing wire, that stuff gets brittle and it just literally falls apart, disintegrates. So again, maybe I'll use some of that. We'll see. But for now, a couple minute ride get this part throw it back on and i'll wrap up the video thanks for watching guys just like that they had it i don't know one or two in stock and like i said i like those ends man they're crimped on there nice let's get home and get this thing on there 
All right, I'm back at the house. I did not have any tech flex, and I started thinking there's no point to really put that on anyways, only because where it's going down by the exhaust, it is the tech flex is kind of like a plasticky material, and it just wouldn't have held up, I don't think, under that much heat. Um, don't there's no need to do this, but I just did it anyways. I took some uh, new black electrical tape that I had and kind of crossed it all the way down, and um, I just did that because it'll kind of hide. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, not seeing red. And then I can always kind of uh, keep an eye on it just to make sure um, it's not getting burnt by the exhaust in any way. I'll be able to quickly tell if, if you know, if I see a lot of red. So uh, I'm going to route it in there now and try to keep it away from the exhaust. I'll route it back through that factory loop that's down there. Let's do it. All right. So very simple, but when you, I did want to describe what I'm doing. What I'm doing is going back to that factory, when I say that kind of loop, that holds it right there. So what I did is I put that end through there, put my finger up underneath it, kind of propped it out a little bit. That way it, um, it makes it around that other metal piece, which that metal piece there has a mount that goes over to the trans. It kind of, it's an extra little mount there. It kind of goes over to one of the trans bolts, kind of hard to see, but it's that guy right there. So again, you've got to push it a little bit. It's real simple. And that way you can run it to where you need to. All right, a few minutes later, I'm all done. Here's what I did. I wanted you to be able to see it before I cut this um, zip tie. I ended up putting a zip tie from that mount I talked about over. You can see where I kind of bent it there a little bit. Does it really necessary? Probably not, but it's a little extra safety. It'll help keep that in place for the most part. And then you can see right there where I routed the wire. Um, I think from the factory, it's routed similar. I don't know if there's another um, piece that holds it. I'm thinking on my 64, it was exactly the same. You just have this one loop that I talked about earlier that it goes through. And what I did is when I routed it there, you'll see when you have the brand new cable, it's got a little, um, it's a little flexible and you can bend it and I have it bent and it's kind of pushed into that little uh, area where the trans bolt is for the bell housing. And then it goes um, perfectly right on the stud. So basically what I did when I was underneath the car is before I fully tighten that down, I kind of pushed that wire about where I wanted it. Then I tightened that down and when I came up here, I was able to go, you know what? I want to have that. That's about the best safety I could have to have it. So it's it kind of pulls it back a little bit. Now, granted, over time, I'll keep an eye on it. Again, it hasn't really been an issue. It didn't burn through down there or anything. I'm just trying to think ahead and kind of go, well, what could I do to foresee it or to try to foresee so that it doesn't hit that exhaust in any way? But Again, uh, with it uh, tied up with the electrical wire, makes it a little bit, um, you know, less visible, so to speak. I'm gonna uh, cut the end of that zip tie off. It comes right up here. And I'm not even gonna zip tie it down there because to be honest with you, where it, cr where it crisscrosses over that harness, uh, there's really no need for me to zip tie it there. And then I've already tightened this down. Uh, really, really uh, nice. What I would suggest is you tighten that down and be careful not to over tighten it because you don't want to break the stud there. Uh, I am eventually going to change this little guy here that runs over for the ignition. You can see where it's butt connected there. So what I'll end up doing is I'll get some more. I actually have tech flex um, that's this size, the tiny size. What I'll do is I'll end up running one continuous wire over here and eventually I'll kind of clean up a couple of those wires. If you don't know on um, on these engines, I think it's 61 through 65, that coil is a pain where, where it's underneath that um, expansion tank. And on the 64 I own, we put the 66, 67 uh, mount where it mounts it in a different place and it's, it's a lot easier, but you can kind of see some of those wires coming off there doesn't look bad at all but what I'll end up doing is possibly replacing some of those if need be again it is a pain to get to that coil but the main thing I want to do is tech flex that change um, any of these white zip ties out to black and change a couple of those things but this is all tightened down you can let the car off the jack stand 
and uh, fire this thing up hopefully in a few minutes. So like my buddy Johnny Garage Johnson always says over on Hardcore Garage, I think that's going to about do it for this video. You saw I started it up. It hadn't started since yesterday. Usually it, it cranks really without pumping it, but sometimes you got to pump it one or two times. Got my foot on the brake like I always preach. Going to go get a cold drink, watch a little bit of football, maybe go for a cruise a little bit later. But again, quick video just to, guide, just to show you the importance of one, having those tight connections on the solenoid two checking those cables and then really kind of three seeing it's not too tough to change that one um but just check your battery cables in general uh your grounds need to be good you need to have good solid connections for of course the positive power as well so stay on the rise and we'll hopefully hit you guys with another video uh I'm working on a couple more for this week we out of here